If you are familiar with fixed robotics, you may have seen or heard of a part known as potentiometer. Right here I have a picture of the VEX approved potentiometer that you can use on your robot in competition. And it is used to go to a specific height on your lift repetitively. So if you need to go to a height during competition and you do it many, many times during competition, then a potentiometer is a great way of doing that because you can just hold a button and it'll go up to that height and stay at that height. Now, where do you plug this in on your cortex? Right here is the standard VEX cortex. And you plug it in right here in your analog ports, which is 1 through 8. You can plug it into any of them as long as you specify which one it is in the program. This is the sample program used for the calibration of potentiometers. It can be found in the samples folder after downloading EZC. It is called potentiometer test as it says right up here. And these first two pieces are comments. So this is a comment, this is a comment. And you can tell because they're in green. It says connect potentiometer to analog input 1. And you just take the cord from your potentiometer and plug it into the analog input port 1 on your cortex. Very simple. But it just lets you know how to use it. Next is the minimum equals 1 and maximum equals 1024. Well, what are these? They are the values that your cortex, or not your cortex, but your potentiometer can go to. So your potentiometer spins approximately 270 degrees. It doesn't spin the full 360. So it has to have a range of values within that uh, spin radius. So your minimum, which is if it was turned all the way one way, the minimum, the farthest that it could go down to would be 1. If you spun it all the way the other way, then the maximum it could go to was 1024. So all the way this way would be 1, all the way that way would be 1024. That's just to help you remember what the minimum and the maximum is. Next is your while loop. Your while loop is a method of keeping your value for your potentiometer updated. If it just got that first value that your potentiometer was at, then it wouldn't work. You need to make sure that as the axle in the potentiometer spins, that the values for the potentiometer change with it. Because it does change as the axle spins. So you want to make sure that's running at all times. So you put while and you would set, you put a 1 in there to make sure it's running all the time. Next, you have get analog input. And it's not actually called analog input. It's actually called potentiometer. As you can see, it has a little potentiometer symbol. And it also says potentiometer right here. So it says get analog number, or analog input number right there. So that would be, once again, your port. And this program says to connect potentiometer to analog input 1. So that is the value you put right here. And then it says retrieve to position. Well, what is position? If we exit out of that and go to variables, it says right here type is integer, name is position. And then the other two columns are just blank. And that is what you use. That's the variable you use to connect the values to the actual program. Last, you have your print to screen. If we click on that, it opens this up. Your message is position equals, so the name of the variable that they used equals, and then it'll show your variable or your value for your that you're getting from your potentiometer next. And then all this other things, other than the message and variable, you would keep the same. These are all default settings. So you, then you hit OK, and then you can just go up here to build and download. Or you can press F7, whichever is faster. Hit yes. Now while this is downloading, I'll tell you about what happens after it gets done. After it gets done, you'll see a screen, a white, blank white screen, and then suddenly numbers will start coming down it. So blank white, and then phew, numbers. Now as you can see, it's about the 1024. It doesn't get quite there, but it's close enough. And if I spin it all the way the other way, it gets down to about 2, which is about the minimum of 1, almost. So I spin it all the way back up again, and it's about 1,024, just as I said in the program. Now, 
what if the cortex is off when you try to do this? Because uh, this confused me a little bit. If you turn the cortex off, you see it goes down to about 25. You spin it all the way to the left, it does go down to 2. So the minimum does stay the same. But if you spin it all the way up, it only goes about 24. So if your maximum value is way less than it's supposed to be, just make sure that your cortex is on and it'll update it. So you don't have to restart the download or anything. Just make sure your cortex is on. Now, the values on the screen are moving very, very quickly. Very quickly. If this was changing constantly, you wouldn't be able to see these values. They're moving so quickly. So I'm just going to hit stop here. And that just stops them. And as you can see, it's going so fast that some of these are actually kind of glitching out. It doesn't change the overall uh, functionality of it, but as you can see it's just going very very quickly and it can be really difficult to tell what values you're looking at so I'm just gonna exit out of this so this is the sample program and the sample program it works but there are issues with it uh, so I'm going to create my own sample program use that you can use for calibration that is more accurate uh, the values are easier to see and it will actually use two potentiometers instead of just one because on a lift you're going to use two not just one so go to new standalone hit no joystick now you're not going to use this type joystick project Wi-Fi you're not going to use this type of project for competition obviously I'm just using this to show you how it works so first things first we're going to put in that while loop that is the most necessary thing put it as one so it's running constantly and then we're going to go to our variables here and type is integer and then the name we're going to name it left and then for this other one integer we're going to name it right left and right for each side of your lift and that will help you distinguish them from each other now that other one that we saw use potentiometer and as you can see it comes up with the screen you choose your port and then my left potentiometer is in port one so I will choose retrieve to left so that's one way of getting it and as I said this one goes up to 1024 but if you use normal analog input this is called analog input over in the inputs tab and as you can see it comes up with the exact same screen so if I wanted to do left with this I would choose one again and left that's another way but this one's maximum is instead of 1024 it's double that 2048 now the analog input high resolution which is right under analog input is my most preferable so once again same exact setup one left but the difference between the normal analog input which has a maximum of 2048 and this one is, and the high resolution is the high resolution has double the maximum so the maximum for the high resolution is actually 4096 which is quadruple what the normal potentiometer one was but what does that mean well overall it still does work the same but that means it allows for more values to be within that same spin radius of 270 degrees that the potentiometer can spin which means more accuracy and that's exactly what you want from your potentiometer is more accuracy as much accuracy as you can get so you can get that lift up to just the right height so I'm going to use the get analog input HR or high resolution so I'm just going to delete these two yes now I'm going to go to analog input high resolution because we have to put in two two of almost everything to go with our left and right side so I have my right plugged into two and I'm going to choose my right variable and that's how you do it for two potentiometers you just double up on everything now we have to add in our print screens so the print screens are also going to be almost exactly the same message left equals then our variable will be left of course and then of course these are the default so you leave them all the same don't even touch them 
So that'll say left equals and then the value of our potentiometer. Hit OK. Go to print to screen again, drag it over, and then we put in right, whoa, right equals, and I'm going to put five equal signs in this space. Why put five equal signs? Because you want to separate in the printer screen when all those variables are going really fast, you want to separate your left from your right. So the left value is going to be close to the left of the screen and the right value is going to jut out some. So you'll be able to tell, alright, this is the left side over here to this at this spot and this is the right side over here at this spot. And that'll just help you choose which one you need to out of the print to screen to use for whatever side of your left. So variable right. Now we're going to add in the wait time. So wait time and right now this is measured in milliseconds as it says right here milliseconds in brackets so that means 1000 milliseconds is one second we're going to make it 250 which is a fourth of a second But that wait time wasn't in the sample program so why are we putting it in this one if you remember the variable or the values for the potentiometer were going very fast on that printer screen so it's useful to put in a wait time because it slows down this while loop a little bit just a little bit just slow enough to where you can still see the values but it's still fast in your final program though for your lift you do not want to wait time this long if one at all if you do decide to put in a wait time put it at only 25 instead of 250 or just remove it completely but make sure that your wait time in your final program is not 250 because it will affect the performance. So now we have our full sample program done. We'll go up to build and download again. Or once again, you can press F7. Yes. Now I'm going to show you a clip how spinning the potentiometers changes the numbers in the print to screen. So right here is the clip of me turning the potentiometer. And as you can see, right here is a small hole, and that's where the axle goes through. And you spin the axle, and that'll spin this little part right here in the potentiometer. So the whole potentiometer doesn't spin, it's just this little part. And it's got a sensor inside that senses when it spins, and that changes the values. On the sides here, you've got these little holes. And these circular holes will allow you to put bolt the uh, potentiometer onto your lift but when you first bolt it on you want to bolt it on very loosely and then gently tighten it later you want to bolt it on loosely so you can have it where you need it and then you can spin it which is why these are circular you can spin it with the bolt still on it to calibrate it as you need to and then you need to tighten it very gently because you want to make sure that when you tighten it that the potentiometer does not move because if it moves then that changes your values and you absolutely don't want that these things are very gentle just a simple tap will throw it off so I'm going to play the video I try to spin it that way can't spin it so I start spinning it the other way see I hit the limit there and then I turn it back and I hit the limit again and I can't turn it anymore that way so as you can see it has these limits and you can't turn it, I can't turn it past the limits with my hands <clears throat> but the motors on the robots can and I'll explain to you what that can do the poten to the potentiometer itself over time now as you can see the left and the right are very well separated so the left is off to the left the right is off to the right and that will help you easily see alright here's my right which is the 4095 and then your left which is about 9 or 10 so my left, which is port 1, it is at 9, 10, or 11. But the minimum is only about, is about 0, is the minimum, 1, 0. But 9 or 10 is very, very close, if you think about the maximum of it. It's very, very close. So it might as well be at about 1. And if I turn it all the way up, it goes up to 4,000. If I turn it all the way down, 
goes back down to 9 or 10. And then same for the right one. The right one's already up at 4,000. If I turn it all the way down, goes down to about 8 or 9. Turn it all the way up. It gets a little bit over 4,000. Now the thing you need to make sure you understand is that these potentiometers only have a spin radius of about 270 degrees, as I said. But the axle can push the center part of the potentiometer past that. It will actually push it past it, and it can break it and wear it down. And when it gets pushed past that point, it'll still work okay for the time being. But as it gets, as time goes on, it will wear it down and wear it down to the point where it eventually will not work as well and malfunction, and it'll become inaccurate. And you just have to replace it in the end. So you want to make sure that when you set it on the robot on the lift that you have them both set to about see I'm turning this one set it at about half of the maximum value so because that means it's about halfway through its rotation so about right there would be good set them both about right there so they have spent they have room to spin both directions that way there's no chance of it going past that limit and breaking your potentiometer after a while. Other than that, that is it for the calibration.